Hey everybody, welcome back to uh, DCC project number two, installing, uh, well, converting my GP40-2 into a, a DCC with LEDs and sound. This is part B. Uh, this part, uh, this is where we're going to be converting the actual train part. In part A, we did some uh, LED installs and installed the uh, LEDs in the cab there. So check out part A uh, and what we did at that step. Uh, one of the very first things you have to do before you're going to do a convert, uh, conversion to DCC is you have to test the train to make sure it's running the way you want it to run before you go ahead and do the uh, conversion. So uh, what you do, you just put it on the track and test it and make sure it's running really nicely, smooth, um, the motor's running good, nice and strong. Um, as you can see there, mine's running really nicely, it's nice and quiet. Uh, the reason being, and what a lot of people make a mistake of, is they think that by converting an old train that doesn't run that great and putting DCC into it, that the, they're magically going to make it run 10 times better, much nicer, uh, better like how they want it to run. Um, when in fact, uh, before you do the conversion, you have to make sure that the train is running DC uh, in the way you're liking it or the way you want it to. Um, so it's very important to uh, make sure you test it out. And as you can see, like I got lots of power there. Um, there we go, lots of speed and everything. So this train is ready to go to be taken apart. Um, and putting over to DCC. Okay, so I've already uh, created a vid of doing a conversion, converting a train over from DC to DCC. I did it with my uh, um, F7, and it was my CP. So if you want to check, click this link right here, and uh, click on that. You can actually follow the conversion, so uh, I don't have to do a, a huge step-by-step -step guide here. It's uh, exactly the same uh, for installing that. Um, just uh, what I'm going to be doing is just removing the four screws that are right there, um, taking off the metal plates, and uh, this time I'm going to remove the whole light fixture housing there. Um, when we get that all apart, we'll, we'll pull the motor out, um, and then we're going to drill a hole right here so we can like install a a screw or something in there so we can solder right to that because I don't know I, I can't solder on that I don't know if anyone else can but um, some say to just go ahead and leave that in there and then you can solder your ground right to there your negative wire but uh, I want to get rid of that totally because we're gonna have the cab with our other lights there so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get started on that so as I started here, it's just typical, you know, in the other video there you see me pulling that all apart. I ripped that off, just kept bending it. Um, on this one here, I got a little bit of the tape there, which is on the positive side. You just ripped that tape off that was there so the light wouldn't ground out on that. We'll clean that up with some alcohol and stuff before we go ahead and put some solder on that. Um, but once you've ripped that off and your light off and everything, the next step is to remove those four screws. And we'll be on our way, and, uh, and we'll go to the next step from there. Okay, so once you get those four screws out, uh, something that I came across with this guy here um, to be a little different is we have to remove the worm gear housing, which very carefully you can just pry up the one edge um, right along here. And then once you pry that off, it'll just pop off just like that. So, just make sure you put that to the side there. Um, reason being is because once uh, I had the screws out, I couldn't get the uh, the actual motor part out of there. So, um, carefully, you know, make, make sure you got clean hands and everything like that. There's going to be grease in there and it's going to be all slippery, but you just pull that out and then pull it out just like that. Put that to the uh, side there. We'll put that over that just like that just to keep everything in order so you know where things are going once you get there I mean I'm not really going to pull out this side um, I may at some point I don't know yet but all I know is now when I lift the motor and pull it out then there you go we, uh, we now have the motor out 
Um, I've marked the front there. I mean, I know which end is the front, but I just did it anyway just to not confuse myself or anything. So now I'm at this stage. I've got the motor out now, so now we just pretty much got to heat up the soldering iron and start uh, doing some soldering and, and tinning so we can get the, uh, the decoder slowly installed there. So um, just to let you know, once you got that worm gear uh, housing off, that is pretty much what's holding on the wheels. So if you wanted to take your trucks or anything off, that's how you do that there. Um, I'm just going to put it back on there because I don't need to worry about that. But that's how you do that. It's a good way of also getting in there and lubricating and everything. But for now, we're not going to focus on that. We're going to start installing the decoder. So that's how you do that. Another quick uh, just step. I know it's in my other video too, but in just make sure that uh, the tabs that are on there that would be for the ground make sure you break those off or bend them in I just break them right off because they're not needed um, and uh, it's gonna be like that and also make sure that uh, you put some tape or something right along that edge because you want to make sure it's insulated you're insulating the whole motor and everything right from the uh, the chassis of the train there just so you don't ground it out or anything and blow a decoder or damage something because uh, like Tommy says it can ruin your day quick so anyways um, on to the next step we'll do some chitting and uh, get it ready to go okay so I wired it all up I uh, got everything soldered in there I hooked up my lights uh, to this locomotive uh, put the cab back in as you can see I uh, was able to get all the wires in there nicely and, and tucked in, but I, I haven't taped anything up yet. I'll, I'll be uh, clearing this all up. I don't pick up my uh, oval speaker until tomorrow, so that's when I'll be uh, see, um, that's when I'll be installing the speaker tomorrow. But uh, for now, we can uh, go ahead uh, do the test. Um, let's see here, loco zero three loco. So I'm hoping that the new speaker I put in is a little louder. Um, I'm finding there's not too much volume with that, but that's okay. I'll, I'll play with it. It's my first uh, install with the sound, but everything works. I uh, got the headlights. They turn on forward, and then you can see them. They actually you can't really see it. You can see it. There you go. So forward backwards so got the LED in there I just put the 5 mil in the back like I uh, mentioned there at the beginning and uh, as of right now we're pretty much good to go I'll just tape it off I'm gonna get all the wires wrapped up nicely but once I uh, get some uh, the new speaker and put it in there we'll be pretty much buttoned up with uh, part B actually I guess that's really uh, almost the whole project right there I really have nothing more I'm going to be doing with this. I thought about ditch lights, but uh, I kind of opted out of that right now. I'm just uh, I'm not going to mess too much with ditch lights. That'll be in my next project because I got right here. First time I've ever messed with them. I don't know if you can see them. These little yellow dots right there are surface mount LEDs, and I got them with the leads on there, so I'll be installing those on my next one. But uh, for now, I'll, I'll stop it there, and then tomorrow I'll uh, just do the end video with the sound and everything buttoned back up and put together. Okay, so as you can see, I have it all back together. I was able to fit the speaker in there nice and snug. Uh, when putting it back together, I had an issue with the decoder being on top of the motor, which would have been around here, and it was kind of hitting the top there, so I removed it. Uh, I had to lengthen a wire onto one of my pickups so I could fit the decoder snug on the top here. And then the speaker and the speaker uh, enclosure there fits snug right up there. So it's holding the, the decoder in there and the speaker box just fits so nice that it's, it's all held in there nice. Um, what I did was uh, when doing the speaker hookup, I took my pin vise with a small drill bit, put two tiny holes in the side here, kind of towards the bottom of where the speaker would have been sitting with the wires. Uh, put the wires through, desoldered it off the round speaker, and soldered it onto this speaker, pulled the wires through as I snapped the speaker in, and it, it, it was in there nice and tight, nice and snug. So it's all in there. Got it all back together, and uh, we'll give her a listen here. 
Uh, let's see, Loco 6416. I have a custom sound project on this, uh, thanks to my buddy Will. Uh, he did a, an excellent job helping me out with that and uh, getting a good horn on there. It's the proper one, it's the EMD 645E3. Uh, with, I do believe this has the P5 horn, so uh, happy to have that on there. Just have a sound. There's the horn, sounds really nice. Another neat thing that I have on here too is if I go with this, I got Doppler. Got a Doppler horn on there. Um, got that horn on here too, just kind of messing around with it. And the short burst uh, horn, got the bell. Let me just turn it up here a little bit. I like it. It sounds really good. I'm happy with it for my very, 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 very first sound project. Turn the bell off there. I can get it going with the pickup of the mic. I'll just turn it up there. Go backwards. I just turned it up quite a bit there, but uh, no, I'm super happy with it. The lights are all working. You go to forward. You can see the lights turn on. Backwards, the lights turn on. This, I would say, is a nice, completed, great sound project, so I'm happy with it. Thanks to having the PR3, I'll turn that down, I'll mute it. Um, thanks for having the PR3, I was able to uh, do the sounds and everything. It's so easy with Decoder Pro. First time I've ever used PR3, so I highly recommend it. It is really great. We'll look at that in a video, uh, upcoming video, just showing you how I hooked it up and everything. Got it to work with Windows 7. The PR3 works fine with Windows 7. There's a lot of people out there who say it doesn't. It works great. And uh, that's that. Let's wrap this project up. Thanks for watching this project. Uh, the next project I'm going to be doing is either my SD75i or hopefully I get my SD40-2 uh, back whenever that is. I'm not sure when that'll be, but uh, that'll be my next ones. All right, thanks for watching. Have a great day.